Hello there. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to construct a three sigma quality P chart and then determine if the relevant process is in control. This question relates to problem 6.15 in your text. Here's the nature of our data. We have the results of inspection of DNA samples taken over the past 10 days with a sample size of 100. So we have days one through 10 with the number of defective. Our objectives are really simple. First, to construct a three sigma P chart. And when we're talking about three sigma, this means that Z is equal to three because we want three sigmas or three standard deviations. The second requirement is if the number of defectives on the next three days are 12, five and 13 to determine if the process is in control. So we'll go with requirement A first to construct our P chart or proportions control chart. Remember that the upper and lower control limit for P are both equal to P bar plus or minus Z times the standard deviation of the sample proportions. So what we need to do first is determine what P bar is. Well, P bar is just the average of all the P's or the, the, the overall average defectives. If we add up all of the defectives, the sum are, is going to equal to 57. And if we have 10 days times 100 samples in each, that means we have a total of 1,000 samples. Well then, P bar is equal to 57 over 1,000, which is equal to 0.057, or 5.7%. That's the average defect rate over all of the samples. Next, we know that the standard deviation of the sample proportions is equal to the square root of P bar times one minus P bar divided by N. So that's equal to the square root of 0 0.057 times 0.943, because of one minus 0 0.057 is 0 0.943, divided by 100, and that is equal to 0 0.023. Well, we can now determine the upper and lower control limits. So the upper control limit is equal to 0 0.057 plus three, because we want three sigma quality, times 0 0.023. That will give us 0 0.126. The lower control limit is 0 0.057 minus 3 times 0 0.023. And that will actually give you a negative 0 0.012, but you can't have a negative because it's impossible to have a proportion of defective less than 0. So that means our lower control limit is 0. What we can do now is create our chart. We know that the center line is P bar. Our upper control limit might look something like that at 0 0.126. And then the lower control limit is gonna be set to zero. We then have three additional days of data, day 11, 12, and 13. And we're told that day 11 has 12 defectives, five, and also 13. So what we want to do is plot all of these and determine if we're in control. Now, because our control chart, in essence, is in percentages, we have an average, or the center line is at 5.7%, with an upper control limit of 12.6%. Conveniently, because our sample size is 100, we can also say that the proportion of defectives in each sample for each day is whatever the number of defects is, divided by 100. So we can, in essence, express all of these as a percentage. So if we plot day one, we have about 7%. So let's say that's about here. Day two, 6%. Day three, 6%. Day four, 9%. Day five is 5%, closer to the center line. Day six, 6%. Day seven, zero. Day eight is about 8%. Day nine is about 9%. Day 10 is 1%. Day 11 is 12%. So getting very close to our line. Day 12 is 5%, so just under. And day 13 is 13%, here we go. So if we were to join our dots, here's what we have. Is the process in control? No, the process is not in control because something on day 13 caused there to be more defectives than is allowable for our process. Within the control limits, the variation is fairly random, although we're getting pretty close to the lower control limit, which is actually fantastic because you don't want any defectives and it can't go anywhere below that. So on the lower end, it will always be in control. And we're getting closer to the upper end over the last few days. So there could be an apparent upward trend here that we may need to be concerned about. And that's it. That's how we determine the overall proportion of defects 
that we use to calculate the upper and lower control limits for a p-chart, and then plot all of our data as a percentage of total defects to determine if our process is in control.